Okay, so we've got this shapes file. Uh, let's just ignore that. And uh, so if you haven't got a copy of that, just remember it's in the P drive. I might just bring that up again. So using the uh, library's shortcut on your desktop, you can browse them to the P drive and in interior design, CAD 1, and then still in the week 1 folder, you'll find the shapes PDF. I'll close it and open it again. And then if you get a message like this, you can usually just cancel that. And then going to the view menu, rotate view, and I'm going to go uh, counterclockwise to set it the right way. And I'm going to move that over to one side and uh, hide these buttons and just make that a bit bigger. Minimize that. And then I'll start AutoCAD from the desktop. So it's always AutoCAD 2014 English. And it'll start with a blank file which you can use to do your work. So I'll close any windows that come up and then just to remind you I'll uh, change the workspace there so make sure you choose AutoCAD Classic at first always uh, in a little while you might want to start using drafting and annotation because it's very similar but using the new buttons so things can be a little bit clearer and you'll be able to work out most of the commands you've been using already um, but I'll go back to AutoCAD Classic and close any palettes or toolbars that are open and so then I'm going to move that over a little bit and oh sorry no, I'll make that a bit bigger just so you can see the uh, the coordinate in the top right corner if you remember in the uh, beginning of the geometry exercise the first rectangle you started at 0 comma 0 so that's going to be your origin in the bottom left and then the top right corner you're given that coordinate. So I'm going to go straight away to draw a rectangle starting at 0 comma 0 so I'll type that in 0 comma 0 enter and then 27500 comma 19000 enter and remember when you try to zoom you won't be able to see it all until you zoom to fit uh, and so if you remember the shortcut for that it's double click with the wheel we'll fit it to the screen but you can always go to the menu and choose zoom extents and that'll do the same thing. So you've got your frame of reference and that's a really important thing when you start any uh, drawing in AutoCAD to get a rough idea of the, the size and the scale you're working with. And so then now I'll move this over and zoom in a bit so I can see the first shape which is a rectangle with another border around it. So where you see these uh, bolder shapes, they're the ones you need to draw first and then the part around it that's not as bold or fainter, uh, you do that second generally. There are other ways, you can work out these in a lot of different ways but that's usually a good way to do it. Do you have to make a line? No, no, that's just to help you. Uh, and so then Oops, going up there. Okay, so given all the information you need to get that size, starting at this point here, you can see if I go to the draw menu and choose rectangle, then I can type in this first coordinate, 2000, comma, 15500, enter, it'll start drawing from there and then I can give the size of the rectangle 3500 by 2000. 
So if you remember to put the at in, that'll help usually. That'll make sure it works. So at 3500, comma, 2000. Enter. Thanks a lot. And then, oh, sorry. And then on the modify menu, I'll choose offset and type in my um, offset amount. Well, it's a thousand overall, but it's 500 either side. So I type 500, enter, choose the rectangle, and then click outside. That's the first one done. The next shape is uh, similar, but I'm going to do that with the line command. So going ahead, drawing a line. And I'm going to type in 8,000, comma, 15,500. Turning on ortho, I'm going to go to the right and type in 750. Coming up, I'll go, uh, well, just to help work out that distance, you can see the uh, side of that shape's two metres, but then we've got to take 750 off to work out the size of this line here. So it's 1250. Could you go from that left? Uh, you could, yeah. Yeah, you can do it another way. So I'm just going to type in, I'll oh, just hit enter to finish that distance. Going to the right, it's the same again, 1250. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up, it's uh, 750 this time. Back to the left, 2000. And then down, I can click on that corner uh, to finish it and then enter. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then going to offset, you can see it's kept that distance that I had before, 500. So I'm going to hit enter there to keep that. And now I can just choose each line and click to the side I want it to go to. Enter. And now to join them together, I'll go to fill it. And then check the radius is set to zero. And I can just go around choosing each line and the one I want to join it to. Enter and then keep going around like that. So I'm hitting enter in between each command. Exactly, yeah. So that's the first two shapes done. Just moving on to the next one, that's as far as I'll go today, just with exercise three there, because this one is a little bit more involved. A good trick is to draw the line at the base of that curve first. So drawing a line from the start point, 14,000, 15,500, enter, and then the line is 750 long, so I'm going to keep the cursor going to the right, type in 750, enter, and then this is the real trick with this one. Thinking about where the center of these curves would be, we know the radius is 2,000. I've come across 750 already. So I'm going to go across another 1250. And then enter. And then enter to finish. And, uh, and now I'm going to go to draw a circle rather than drawing arcs. And that's a really good trick. Often when you need to create arcs, it's easier to make the full circle first and then trim afterwards. So oh, so it's 2000 minus 750. Uh, so now if I go and just use draw circle center radius, going from the center point to the right here, and then back to the left, and then again I'll draw another circle from that same center point going to the point on the end of that line and then 
drawing one more line, this time from the quadrant of the inner circle to the quadrant at the top of the outer circle. That gives me the basic outline of this bold shape. I can delete the construction line now using trim. I can then choose the two lines where I want to cut the circles, enter, and then I'll choose the two circles to cut them. From that point on, it's just a matter of using offset to offset the uh, same distance, 500. So I'll hit enter to keep that, choose the two arcs and the lines. And then the last part maybe isn't obvious as well. To draw the rest of it, you just you need to draw extra lines from the ends of those arcs. And I'm pre pressing enter in between each, each line. So I'm basically extending the arcs with a straight line. And then to join those lines to the, um, to the others, I'll use fillet just to connect those. And that one's done. Okay, so the next two, if you want to have a go at the others, uh, they're easier to work out, but I'll, I'll just finish that one there. So I'm going to save that file. Just as shapes will do. And that's done. So uh, I'll finish the recording there and I'll do the others later.